Well, good afternoon. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. I'm really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable gardens. A beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. The sun is shining. Well, anyhow, I wanted to share with you some tips and ideas on how you can plant King Arthur sweet bell peppers in your vegetable garden. So I'm really glad you could join me today. So follow me along and I'm going to show you where I'm going to be planting these. So I'm actually going to be planting these right here in this row. And so let's get started planting these peppers. So behind every label here, you know, which comes with your plant, there's always a little bit of helpful information on here. So let's just take a second here and read this. It says King Arthur Pepper Sweet Bell. That's the variety and it matures in 60 to 75 days. And fruit size is four and a half inch by four and a half inch. And it's a very large blocky peppers mature from green to red. Disease resistance. And so, you know, peppers, again, they love full sun, just like your, your tomatoes. And so, also, if you can see here in front of me, I'm standing or kneeling on my black plastic. It's an in inorganic mulch, you know, and I just love the black plastic. I grow my peppers in it and uh, also my tomatoes and my melons because they like warm feet. They're heat lover plants. And, uh, and the black plastic, you know, it, it's, weeds become a thing of the past when you use black plastic and uh, it also holds in the soil moisture for you so you don't your watering needs aren't near as great and it also warms the soils up real nice in the springtime and then this piece of plastic I just put a new piece uh, on here a, a little while ago and uh, I had a piece previous to this and it lasted me three years and so I'll take this plastic sheathing off. It's a six mil polyethylene plastic. I'll take this off come the springtime and then fertilize and, and loosen the soil up using my garden fork. But uh, I leave this on over the winter. It helps protect the soil from eroding uh, over the winter and into the early spring. And so, so anyhow, uh, I also in the front of me here, along the front edge, I'm going to be growing a couple basil plants. I like keeping the basil out near the front of my raised garden bed. This garden bed here that I'm growing these in is 18 foot by 30 foot. And I cut out six inch, six by six inch holes. And I also have an irrigation system under here. And I, I used uh, some half inch PVC and drilled one sixteenth inch holes in it like every 10 to 12 inches. And so it was something I did last year as an, an experiment and uh, the half inch PVC worked out really well. I used to use soaker hoses, but you know, they're not always dependable and they may break on you. And so, so what I'm gonna do here is just plant a couple uh, of these peppers. I had planted some more behind me. I also still have to purchase some more in the future. But uh, you wanna make sure your soil's nice and loose and uh, nice and fertile. You know, sometimes it's good too every three years to get a, a soil test, you know, from a from a state extension near you or a local garden supply may be able to get a, have a garden test on the soil nutrient level and the organic matter. It costs around $10. It's something well worth doing. And so, so I get these market packs from uh, Ray's Nursery nearby and they're $1.60 for six of them. And so, I don't always have the time to start plants indoors. You know, I do a lot of my seed sowing, direct sowing outdoors. So I'm simply going to just take 
one of these cell packs out and you always want to inspect the root system it never hurts before you buy them make sure they're not root bound and uh, I'm just going to simply get my hand here you could use a trowel if you prefer but my hand works great because the soil is nice and loose and then just simply dig a hole and then I always like using my four fingers here and pushing down firmly on the root ball so it, it uh, secures it in there nice and then take your watering can and just water it in real nice and so here in Pennsylvania zone 6 our frost date, our last frost date was May 15th, and so we're, we're like a week after that. And uh, so, so the soil's starting to warm up. Already this plastic is uh, nice and warm on my hand, so I'm sure that soil temperature, you know, they like a good 70 degree or more soil temperature. And so we have one more plant to do. But before I move on to another thing I would recommend is staking your tomatoes. Or, I'm sorry, your peppers. Because these peppers, I'm just telling you, these peppers produced amazingly last year. The, the flesh was nice and thick. And uh, but put your steak, I use a steak here because they're inexpensive. I use metal cages on my tomato plants. But put it in now while the root ball is nice and, nice and small. You're not going to disturb the roots. And then just give it a little tap so it's nice and secure. And then once this plant grows up, some more, a good foot or more, I'll start just using some uh, rope and tie it to the stake. And sometimes if you can't get these out of the pack, sometimes you can turn them upside down and, and tap them. You know, that's another good tip. And then I'm, again, I'm just going to dig another hole here and lightly firm it in and then give it a nice watering. And then just add the steak and tap it in. So anyhow, uh, you know, I think buying these transplants work out really great. I just planted all most of my tomatoes. I still have some more to, to do and also my melons and cucumbers. I haven't done them yet. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions or comments about the video, feel free to leave them in the section below. So I just want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.